Good day, fellow investors. In the asset classes overview for 2024, thank you for the 27,000 views. A lot of you asked me to dig deeper into bonds. And thank you for the comments. And that's what I spend my weekend on to really check all the bond investing options out there to give you the right risk and reward so that you can see how various bonds from treasury, short term, 30 year, high yield, corporate, fit your portfolio. And bonds have been on everyone's lip lately because for the first time after 15 years of negative returns for bonds, for the first time bonds are actually giving some kind of return, crashed a little bit over the last months, but 4% is already something. However, don't get confused by the 4% because if you look at real returns, returns after inflation, for the 10-year treasury, we are still at zero. So no real returns. However, bonds are a specific financial security vehicle that you can use if you are in a certain financial situation. And therefore, this video will help you decide whether you need bonds how much in your portfolio for 2024. And we'll discuss all of them starting with US treasuries. The most famous bonds, US dollar, everyone wants them. And if you look at the yield curve, of course, interest rates were close to zero two years ago. However, now that has changed. And we can see that in the very short term, bonds are yielding 5%, around 5%. And then going more longer term, we have this tunnel around 4%. So if you want to give your money to the US government for 30 years, you can get a 4% yearly interest on that. But for us investors to park money, this is unlikely a good long-term option for investors. If you want to speculate a little bit, we'll discuss that in a moment. But for us investors, this is likely the best option to park your money with a high yield. And that is exactly what Warren Buffett has been doing for a while. And you can see here that Berkshire Hathaway has $150 billion in short-term investments in U.S. Treasury bills. Usually he has an average maturity of four months. And what are Treasury bills? If we look at the government side, Treasury Direct. Treasury bills are bills, bonds, four terms ranging from four weeks to 52 weeks. That's up to a year short-term investments. And that's exactly what Warren Buffett likes to keep his money in. And he's getting a great return on that. 5% now, which is immediately reflected in the interest, dividend, and other investment income for Berkshire. First nine months of 2023, it went from 7 billion to 11 billion because the government is paying more on that money received from Berkshire. And I will give you an even more interesting fact when it comes to Warren Buffett and his portfolio. Bonds are a huge part of it. Therefore, Warren Buffett must be thinking something, seeing something that most people out there, extremely long US stocks aren't seeing. Because if you look at Warren Buffett's portfolio, this is the 150 billion in cash. Compare that to investment in equity securities, 318 billion. So we can say that 30% of Warren Buffett's portfolio is in short-term US Treasury bills yielding 5%. 30% of the available investing portfolio. And let me give you something even more surprising. If we look at what Warren Buffett paid for stocks for his stock market portfolio, his cost is 104 billion. 104 billion means that Warren Buffett spent less cash during his career for stock investments than he has now on the balance sheet. Imagine that if you have a stock market portfolio that you spent a million on, you should have then 1.5 million 
in US short-term treasuries. This is what Warren Buffett thinks of the current market, too expensive for him, so he prefers waiting for better opportunities with short-term US treasuries. And that's also my opinion. If you think the market is risky and you don't have other options, then short-term US treasuries are a good way to park your US dollars. If you're from Europe, 5% is not the case, but you still can get 3% from Germany, for example. And why is Warren Buffett not holding longer term bonds? Well, if we read the 2022 letter to shareholders, you can see that he doesn't believe that the government borrowing at will will not come at consequences. And therefore, he says, okay, I can park my money, but short term, no volatility you will see later, and therefore I can move my money whenever I see fit. And that is why he doesn't invest in anything longer term, because he thinks that inflation will eat up all the returns, the government is printing money, heads over fist, at some point in time there will be consequences. Therefore, these long-term bonds are not to be suggested for those who want to invest for the long term. Pension funds still have 40% of their assets in these things and therefore they will destroy 40% of your future pension purchasing power. However, these bonds are good for speculators because if we look at the returns now that over the last three months interest rates went down one percent or a hundred basis points from five to four on longer term bonds because everyone is expecting the fed to lower rates this year you can see that the total return for the u.s longer term bonds is positive. So if interest rates go even lower from the current yield, you make 20% return in one year if you hold the 30-year treasury. But of course, long term, you must keep in mind that if interest rates don't go lower, you lose on inflation. The government will not lose money on that it can print it can make inflation and therefore that's long-term risky same in germany if interest rates go back three percent is already gone likely so 2.3 percent lower than the us if you go convert your euros to get a higher yield here the spread is 150 basis points and you can lose or gain that with currency changes in a week so that's the risk with that. There is simply no alternative. Interest rates are still lower in Europe, but you can diversify hedge. We cannot predict currencies going forward. You can pause here and check how bonds are valued if you want to know more. But in short, if interest rates decline 1% from 4 to 3%, if you own the 30 year at 4%, you own something that you paid 100 giving 4% where now people are paying the same money for 3%. Of course, your thing, your coupon for the next 30 years is worth more and therefore you can gain 20% in one year by buying a long-term bond. And you can read more on Investopedia, just write bond valuation and it's very well explained there. Further, if we look at the fixed income market, yes, interest rates are there, something is there, but again, nothing spectacular apart from the short term 5%. But apart from the opportunity, keep in mind, as shown below, if interest rates go up, you actually lose money on that bond. So that is the risk and reward. And interest rates are at 4%, but those are not historic opportunities like we have seen in May of 1984 when I was one year old. Of course, I didn't look at US bonds there, but those who bought then a 30-year bond enjoyed a 13% yield that can be reinvested year by year and this was one of the best investments out there. However, many thought so here, then bet on that got wiped out when rates went up again and then only then they saw this huge 
decline in interest rates. What will be next? It is impossible to know. So we have covered pretty much US treasuries. Let's look at the other side of the bond scenario which is investment grade corporate bonds in line with let's say the government a little bit more you can lock in at 10 years but i would not dare to predict where will interest rates go the next 10 years then we have convertible bonds at 7.8 percent rates went down a little bit therefore the yearly return is there and positive high yield bonds again 1.4% down, therefore the return for those invested has been positive for 2023. Municipals looks like the safest investment out there, 13 year average maturity, lower than government interest rates, mortgage backed securities, asset backed securities and leveraged loans are loans given to corporate or people that already have debt issues and therefore you see the very very high yield now discussing high yield you might think okay i get seven eight percent that's better than the four percent i get from the government but you must keep in mind high yield in other words is junk wall street likes to call it high yield because it's easy to sell high yield to someone it's exciting rather than say you're buying junk but junk this is something very important with bonds you need to understand the ratings and you can see that junk highly speculative so if there are adverse changes in the business or economic conditions over time think recessions higher interest rates or whatever then the business will have issues but for now there is financial flexibility that supports servicing financial commitments for now and if you look at the u.s high yield over time it is pretty volatile and if you can nail this period where those rates go down you can make money on those long-term bonds however over the long term i have checked the iShares high yield corporate bond etf And if you invested in April 2007, when the interest rate was 7.35%, you would expect a 7.35% return going forward. But your $10,000 over 15 and something years went to $21,700, which is just 4.7% per year. So where did that 300 basis points difference go? Well, if you look at the actual ETF, you see that over time, the value goes down, down and down because a lot of those companies actually go bankrupt. So therefore the higher yield because some of these companies go bankrupt And at the end, you come out with 4.7% per year, while the 30-year government bond was around 5%. So same return there. This is no risk if the US government doesn't go bankrupt with taking risk for this. But of course, if you buy this and then things improve, you can make money when things improve and rates go down, as it has been the case over the last few months if things continue this can go up again but that is again a risk discussing bonds of course the conclusion is it all depends on interest rates going forward especially longer term bonds and the forecasts for interest rates going forward is that the fed will cut the rate 150 basis points 4 percent by the end of 2024 and then even lower and lower but always remember that what is the probability what is the market's consensus is always already priced in and as the market changes expectations then you see this volatility going on if the fed lowers from the current five something percent to three percent and lower and this actually happens they succeed in that then yes bonds longer term bonds will worth more and you can make some money of that there is some data that indicates this is actually a good risk and reward investment now because we have this wall of debt that 
needs to be refinanced. 30 billion from the government. Households have done well in refinancing, but corporate business 12 billion, financial sectors 20 billion, and all that pile of money needs to be refinanced, especially the government needs to borrow at lower costs. The government's debt has been funded by the Fed, of course, because the Fed is buying treasuries as the government is borrowing more. But that comes at the cost. People want higher interest for lending to the government. And you can see the explosion, the doubling in the interest cost for the US government alongside the refinancing of 6.5 trillion in 2023, 2024, another 4 or 5 trillion. And if this is refinanced at a high interest rate, then this burden will go even higher and that is not good for the budget. Of course, also corporate debt is maturing. That is approximately 10 trillion. And also corporations want to see lower interest rates so that they are saved with this. Therefore, the opinion is that the Fed will be forced to lower rates. That is known and priced in at a certain point. What is unknown and risky when it comes to these bonds is what is unknown. We cannot know where interest rates will go. Inflation, will the Fed be forced to keep interest rates higher? Will there be a recession that puts the risk on refinancing, etc.? That's the unknown when it comes to these long-term situations. And the key for you when you come to portfolio construction and your money is what do you need these bonds to do? Because predicting interest rates over time, impossible. Impossible. There would be no Warren Buffett investor. There would be the Warren Buffett bond market something guru that we would discuss everywhere. We would not follow Buffett. but. First and foremost, as value investors here, to park your money, if you have no other option, US Treasury bills, and even in Europe, 3% or something, is still a good idea. At least you get something until you find something better. And discussing portfolio construction, we have already shown that Warren Buffett has a lot of money in US Treasury bills, but over the long term, bonds, Compared to stocks, the returns are bad with bonds, better with stocks, and even lower with T-bills. So for investors, I repeat myself, it's not a go. So bonds are a no-go. But you can see the stability of US Treasury bills. So you get the yield and you get extreme stability if you buy, this is the Treasury bill ETF. And you get now 5%, which is good for waiting. But also Warren Buffett lost a lot of money because imagine that he spent his 60 billion in cash in 2015-16 buying Apple. That would now be 300 billion extra on Berkshire's value. He did not so that money was giving 0% and he still just held to that money. That is the risk and reward if you don't act over the long term. However, now we have no risk and 5% for the short term. If you are interested in bonds, how to buy them is also a question that I get often. Well, if I look at interactive brokers, if you want to check this broker, please click on the link in the description below. It supports the channel. But you can get 4.8% just by holding your cash money on their account. Therefore, no need to even invest in bonds, go to that hustle. Likely, some of your banks will also give you 5%. In Europe, there is also a good return, 3.4% on your money, which is already something. But if you still want to trade bonds, the best thing to do is to ask your broker. With Interactive, you need trading permissions. Likely, there is more costs to it, but just check the broker, ask them. You can always buy the ETFs, the short-term US Treasury ETF, high yield, long-term 2030. Those are all there if you want to keep it simpler. And now to conclude, what is my bond strategy? I'm not Warren Buffett. I know that bonds over the long-term 
are detrimental to stocks. I even think long-term investors, it's better to buy the S&P 500 even at current levels than to invest long-term in bonds. This is because bonds are limited as investments. The upside is limited. Inflation eats up most of the returns. And therefore, it is not something that you can gain wealth on long-term. Short-term, park your money, yes, but long-term, nothing special there. And you can check my research platform for my investment picks where we have 5-7% dividend yields, which are better than what the bonds offer. And plus, you have the upside of the businesses. That is what we value investors are looking for. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.